Hi everyone, I'm Xu Jiao from the Center for Reproductive Medicine, Shandong University. In this section, we will talk about the application of flow cytometry in reproductive medicine. First, I'm going to give a brief overview of the flow cytometry. Flow cytometry is a multi-parameter cell analysis technique used to detect and measure the physical and chemical characteristics. It can be used for detection of cells, microbes, and biochemical particles. There are flow cytometer for analysis and also cell sorter for isolation. There are three different signals the flow cytometer can detect. The forward scatter correlates with the cell size and size scatter is proportional to the granularity or internal complexity of the cell. In this manner, cell populations can often be distinguished based on differences in their size and granularity alone. A useful example of this is when running blood samples on the flow cytometer. Three main populations of leukocytes can be separated. As well as separating cells based on forward and side scatter, cells can also be separated by whether they express a particular protein. In this case, a fluorochrome is often used to stand the protein of interest. In this case, the fluorescent signal's intensity is associated with the quantity of protein expression. The use of multiple fluorescent antibodies or dyes provides information regarding the co-expression of multiple targets, as well as the relative density of each target. Flow cytometry is now widely used for basic cell biological research. It's capable of measuring a variety of cellular characteristics such as surface and intracellular molecules, secreted factors, DNA content, and mitochondria at the center. It also allows for detection of some cellular function and multiple parameter analysis of single cells to characterize and define different cell types in a heterogeneous cell population. The second part is the cell function analysis. So function assay mainly includes cell apoptosis, proliferation, and cell circle. As for apoptosis, in the early stage, there are externalization of phosphatidylserine, reduced mitochondrial membrane potential, and activation of caspase. While in the later phase, there are increased membrane permeability and DNA fragmentation, all these processes can be detected by flow. Well, the proliferation and the cell circle can be assessed by DNA content, CFSE tracing, BRDO incorporation, etc. Here we have some examples. The externalization of phosphatidylserine is one of the features of early apoptosis. In normal viable cells, the phosphatidylserine is located on the inner side of cell membrane. In early apoptosis, the phosphatidylserine flips from the inner side to the outside surface. The exposed phosphatidylserine can bind to a nexin file with high affinity. 7AD is a nucleic acid dye. It cannot penetrate the intact cell membrane or viable or early apoptotic cells. When cells are stained with these two dyes, the viable cells are double negative for a nexin file and 7AD. Early apoptotic cells are single positive for NX5, and the double negative group are lead apoptotic or necrotic cells. Cell proliferation and cell circle. BRDU and EDU can be incorporated into replicate DNA during the S phase. Staining with the anti BRDU antibody, the S phase can be identified to show proliferating cells. Coupled with a dye that binds to total DNA, the fluorescence intensity varies with the DNA content. In this case, the cell cycle can be determined. It could also allow detection of the proliferative characteristics of cell throughout the cell circle. In addition, there is fluorescent protein analysis. Flow is often used to detect transfection efficiency and protein expression. Unlike the fluorescence microscopy, 
which requires manual counting and a microscopic field. The flow allows rapid and quantitative detection of multiple fluorescent proteins and easier for data statistics. Then here comes the sperm cell uh, structure and functional analysis. We will introduce the analysis of DNA content first. Spermatogenesis can be divided into three stages. First, the spermatogonia proliferate and differentiate it into the primary spermatocytes, which contain fourfold amount of DNA. Second, the primary spermatocytes become the diploid secondary spermatocytes by the first meiosis. Finally, the secondary spermatocytes form spermatid with haploid DNA content by the second meiosis, and then the sperm are formed. Based on the change in chromatin structure, the employee, cell size, and shape during spermatogenesis, flow of the DNA dystony can distinguish cells at different developmental stages. Well, how does this work? The testicular tissue were collected and prepared for single cell suspensions. The cells were stained with whole chest and PI for flow analysis. The emission spectra of whole chest are broad and can be detected by two channels. Whole chest blue represents changes of the employee and whole chest red represents changes of chromatin structure. As shown in this figure, it can differentiate the haploid spermatid, two ploid secondary spermatocytes, rare spermatogonia, and four ploid primary spermatocytes. It can distinguish different periods of the first meiosis as well. Currently, flow has been successfully applied to the analysis and isolation of male germ cells in mouse models, providing an effective technique support to explore the mechanism of spermatogenesis. The sperm functional analysis mainly include the CD45, CD53 staining to analyze semen leukocyte content, SYBR14 PI double staining to detect sperm plasma membrane integrity, equity orange staining to detect sperm DNA integrity, that is sperm DNA fragmentation index. There are also mitochondrial membrane potential and acrosome integrity. This functional assay on sperm enable the routine semen analysis to the cellular molecular level. Sperm DNA fragmentation index assay by flow cytometry is the most accurate, rapid, and fully reproducible method. It's recommended by the expert consensus and WHO standards for male reproductive genetics testing. The normal sperm DNA is tightly bound and acid resistant maintaining the stability of the double strand. However, the damaged or immortal sperm has loose chromatin, its DNA becomes single-stranded under acid's action. Acrodin orange appears green when associated with normal DNA and becomes red when associated with damaged single-stranded DNA. The percentage of sperm with DNA damage can be calculated, when the DFI is greater than 30%, it suggests subfertility potential. Okay, we end this chapter here. We briefly introduced the analysis of cell function and sperm cells. In the next chapter, we will talk about immunophenotyping and cell sorting. Thank you.